Good morning, Dr. Johnny in class. My name's David Valor. I'm a sports development coordinator at St. Augustine's College. Uh, it's a prep to 12 school, and I'm lucky enough to look after all the strength and conditioning and sports development at the school. Uh, that's my day job. Uh, outside of that, I work as a personal trainer and strength and conditioning coach who specializes in working with uh, young athletes six to 16 years, uh, something that I thoroughly enjoy. And obviously I'm doing a full-time uh, degree as well uh, in exercise and sports science, which I'm uh, really enjoying. Uh, this is my second psych unit, done uh, Psych 101 uh, and now 308 and really enjoying both of them uh, and, and learning lots of things that I can use in, in my work, which is uh, yeah, really exciting. So psychology has been a bit of a hobby of mine for a number of years now. Uh, my favourite uh, book that I've read you now within psychology is Man's Search for Meaning by uh, Dr. Victor Frankl. Uh, really interesting theories. And uh, today I'm going to talk about two things that I think I can use, uh, I, I know that I can use in, in my work, which is motivation and one theory of motivation, self-determination theory. So first I'm going to give you a, a definition of motivation and then we'll talk about self-determination theory. So Motivation is the direction and intensity of effort. So if we think about that for a moment, uh, direction is you know, how, uh, whether you move towards something or you're sort of driven away from it. So if you use an example of you know, me wanting to eat some ice cream, because pretty much all my examples involve ice cream or chocolate, uh, you know, I want to have some ice cream and I'm drawn towards the ice cream. You know, I want the ice cream, I move towards it, I go to the freezer and I grab the ice cream out. And it's pretty simple. Not too hard to be motivated to eat ice cream. Okay, conversely, if mum sort of says, okay, Dave, sit down at dinner and there's a whole plate of uh, Brussels sprouts there, um, you know, the direction of my effort uh, is probably not going to be that fantastic. Okay, I'm not going to be drawn towards those, those Brussels sprouts. Uh, I'm going to probably want to move away from them uh, before too long, okay? Uh, also the same with intensity of effort. If we use the same example, um, you know, and there's only uh, a little bit of ice cream left in the in the tub and myself and my little sister uh, both want to get the ice cream, uh, you know, you can you can bet that I'm going to, my intensity of effort is going to be quite good, okay? So I'm going to move towards that ice cream uh, pretty abruptly with lots of intensity and uh, sister's going to probably get pushed out the way. Uh, conversely, uh, going back to the Brussels sprouts example as well, if um, you know, there's only enough Brussels sprouts for me or my little sister, I'm going to do the gentlemanly thing and let my, my little sister go after these. So the intensity of my effort for the Brussels sprouts, probably not going to be the same as uh, what it would be for the ice cream. Uh, so direction and intensity of effort equals motivation. Okay. So moving on now to self-determination theory. So self-determination theory posits that competence, autonomy, and relatedness are three basic human needs. And our ability to uh, satisfy those, human, those three basic human needs will determine our intrinsic motivation, okay? So again, let's just think about that for a moment. Competence, autonomy, and relatedness. Um, yeah, if you think about a coach or a teacher that you've had in the past, and, and you know a good one, and someone who's really motivated you um, and really you know, has made you feel like you can do things, um, you know, made you a, a part of what, um, what what you're involved in, and and you know made you feel part of a team or part of a, a part of something, something uh, bigger than just yourself. You know, that's going to fulfill those three basic needs. So, you know, competence is that, that, that need to feel like you can complete the task or that um, you, know, you can feel confident in, in uh, attempting the task with, you know, without worrying too much about what might happen if you can't complete the task. So you feel competent, which obviously leads to then confidence. Uh, autonomy is, you know, it's a you know, buzzword at the moment is, is buy-in. So you know, being part of something, uh, sorry, having a, a say in something. So you know, it might be when you can complete things or how you can complete things, but you know, not just being dictated to every step of the way and micromanaged, so that's, that's autonomy. And the last one, relatedness. You know, everybody wants to feel like they're part of something. 
um, part of a team or an organization or a movement or whatever it might be. So um, that's relatedness and, and coaches and teachers who can make you feel part of something, uh, make you feel competent or you, you know, feel like you can complete the task and that you have a say or, or some buy-in in, into that subject uh, or that movement uh, will you know, fulfill those three basic needs uh, of competence, autonomy and relatedness and that will intrinsically motivate you. Okay, I'm just going to leave you with one final thought. My, my uh, two young sons play football, soccer, and uh, they want to be pro footballers one day. And within football and soccer, there's this club versus country debate you know, where footballers get paid millions and millions of dollars a year by their club to play football. And, of course, you know, they want to play for their country as well. So clubs aren't very keen on their star footballers that they're paying millions of dollars leaving the team in the middle of the year to go and play for their country and potentially get injured. So why is it that footballers would risk, why would they risk you know, those contracts or upsetting their employer and getting paid millions and millions of dollars to go and play for their country? So thinking about self-determination theory and the needs for competence, autonomy and relatedness, think about why would a footballer getting paid millions of dollars by their club, why would they risk that or risk upsetting their coach or their employer uh, to go and play for their country? I'd like you to think about that over the next couple of days. When we have our tutorial on Thursday, we'll discuss this. Thank you.